disturbing details this morning about the accused driver behind the Flinders Street road rampage in Melbourne CBD this week. All right, Melbourne, if you weren't scared enough by the first lot of reports, it's got a chilly <laughs> Today, Melbourne reporter Chris Hennahern is at the Melbourne Magistrates Court for us this morning. Chris, what more do we know about him? Tracy, the court heard that 26-year-old Blaze Pemberton, Blaze Pemberton Burden... OK, we, we've got a name now. I didn't have that a day or two ago in this court now. And, look, I, I wasn't always totally on board when people would, you know, look at the way they named things or there were numbers that they were interconnecting different loads of bullshit. <laughs> but come on, Blaze. <laughs> Straight after fucking eight weeks of bushfires. <laughs> oh, come on. Of course, the bushfires actually happened. It's just their whole narrative about the climate change nonsense. That's what I was referring to there. Told police that he got his tactics from Burke Street mass murderer James Gargasoulis. All right, for anyone that just thought he you know, just coming from out of town, you're nothing to Jimmy. It just coincidentally did exactly the same thing. Just making sure, you know, this is to do with Jimmy, everybody, OK? This is the Jimmy operation. It's still going. So after doing donuts in front of Flinders Street Station on Wednesday afternoon, Afternoon. Police allege that he ran a red light before his silver sedan broke down. Police extremely worried about what would have happened had it not. Oh, okay, you know that's a new one. It it, it broke down. Uh, you know they didn't have to run it off the road like they did in Christchurch. And well, Jimmy had a big crash. You don't have to have any scenes like that or intersect by the police. It just stopped. Get the car to stop. So he, he was ready to maybe go on a rampage or whatever. You go, like, how unlucky is he? He's got his car. Was presumably it's full of petrol. It's done 200 and something thousand k's reliably. And right now, <laughs> it stops. <laughs> Not like a couple of k's away. <laughs> right where he's just done the donuts. <laughs> and right in front of cops, <laughs> to arrest him. <laughs> In recent days, police say the accused tweeted, I don't come for peace, I come for war. I wonder if anyone can find that tweet. But anyway, he said he's come for war. Yeah, but they said he wasn't terror. Who, who's he fighting for then? It's not for the terrorists, but he's fighting us with his car that unfortunately broke down, but he would have. Buddhism, terrorism. I'll break every rule in the book. I'll make the Holocaust look like a walk in the park. I'll make Tiananmen Square look like child's play. Buddhism. That's right. right. Terrorism. What is he, a, a Buddhist who's a terrorist? Like, <laughs> Buddhists were ideologically against, against mainstream Australian society. I don't always mention Buddhism. Or is he going to attack Buddhism? Does, doesn't really say. But that, that's new, though. Same as the car breaking down. And look, he's aiming high. He's going to break every rule in the book. Well, that's a lot of rules. And he's going to make the Holocaust look like a walk in the park. And Tiananmen Square look like child's play. Oh, he's, he's aiming high, yeah. right? Eh? Pemberton Burden was denied bail. He'll appear here in the Melbourne Magistrates at Court again next Friday. Tracy? So shortly before the car broke down, he was just jumping on the car and then he freely got back into it. Then something's happened to her. I haven't seen any footage of the actual car when it breaks down. What does it make like bang and smoke come out in the back or or whatever? It doesn't hit anything. It just breaks down. Now, if he had time to get on top of the car at all, I would have thought he would have got out, you know, put the bonnet up, <laughs> start looking around. <laughs> yeah, this spark commit to or something. I'll at least try and get it going again. So here's some extra information that Christine, who may or may not be actually on site. The court heard that Blaze Pemberton Burden, uh, an IT work worker, had to be removed from his former workplace a day before his CBD arrest. He was taken to hospital for a mental health assessment. He was later released. OK, so he's had his big plans for, for mass destruction and mass deaths of humanity. But they didn't really show say what his motivations were. They mentioned Buddhism, but now they're here. They're introducing it into this part of the story that are uh, the mental health. <laughs> okay, so they want us to believe what they said just happened. Let's just have a quick look at it. Okay, so he's at his workplace. This is just the day before to, that this, that this happened, right? And he goes nuts. Nuts enough that he has to be removed from his workplace. <laughs> he's an IT worker. Who removed him? And then he was taken to hospital. Who took him to hospital? Whatever, wouldn't there be like a triple zero call or, you know, if he's forcibly, they don't say he was forcibly taken, they just say he was taken to hospital. Yeah, well, that's okay, he would have to have been, you know, coerced somehow. So is there any kind of record of the police or anyone attending there? 
or did his co-workers and HR department go take him to hospital without any authority? So what level of nuts was it? Like he couldn't just you know be pretending he's a chicken going around cluck 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 or something, or wearing his underpants on the outside after he's been to the toilet or something like that. He's a nuts would have to have like been a threat to his co-workers. Otherwise, they've got to remove him. They just say, oh, listen, you know, you're not a chicken. You can you just go home and you know maybe you know get a bit of help and come back tomorrow or next week and take a bit of sick leave? <laughs> no, he was taken to hospital. So it was more than just pretending he's a chicken. Anyway, as this transpired, he's actually a, a danger to all of Melbourne, Victoria, and looks like you know people in China and Israel at this point in time. And, and they would have had access to his tweets because he tweeted a couple of days before. So did the hospital see the tweets? Did the police <laughs> see the tweets? If God, I oh know he's fine. We just let him out, even though he's apparently been so much of a danger. He was removed from his from his uh, his workplace. Look, obviously he's just. They're just making up. The, the script writers are just trying to, you know, piece it all together to make out like it, it could somehow have happened. But look, it's just a load of nonsense. Totally fake. All right, that's it.